we can use Green's theorem in different ways to help us find different quantities. So in this case, we're going to use Green's theorem to find the area enclosed by an ellipse. And here it's the boundary of the ellipse then that will represent our curve C. This is really an example of running Green's theorem in reverse. So we have Green's theorem that says we have the integral over the closed region D of Q sub X minus P sub Y dA, and of course that's equal to the integral over the closed curve C of P dx plus Q dy. So here's our Green's theorem statement written out sort of backwards. Um, the other thing that we have to remember is when we compute the area using a double integral, that double integral represents, or the integrand rather, is represented with just the function 1 and that ultimately then gives us the area of our particular region. In this case, to compute that as a double integral uh, with our ellipse here might not be the best case. It really might not work out super clean for us. It might be a fair amount of work. Not that we couldn't do it. But the fact that this turns out, this integrand here turns out to be 1, is actually fairly important for us as we set this thing up. So what we want to do is recognize in this problem that q sub x minus p sub y has to be equal to 1. The different thing about this setup is that we don't really have p and q. We don't have a field to work with. But what this does tell us is that we can effectively choose any field, any p and q, so long as this requirement holds. And there's several examples of things that we could use. I'll show you a few here that are some standard ones that are often taken. So if you can take P as 0 and Q as X as one example, we can have P as negative Y and Q as 0. And also we could have P as negative 1 half Y and Q as 1 half X. And this is negative here. If we use these as P and Q, you can verify pretty quickly the partial of Q with respect to X is 1 for this one, and the partial of P with respect to Y, of course, is 0, so that does satisfy our condition here. We can also verify here the partial of Q with respect to X is 0, and the partial of P with respect to Y on that top one is negative 1, the double negative here making that difference again positive 1. And the same would hold true here for this last one as well. So any of these particular choices could work for our field that we want to integrate over, again, so long as this particular quantity holds. You can pick whatever you want. The answer will be the same. So I'll just take the first one here, the one where p is 0 and q is equal to x, and we'll work through this particular problem. We are going to have to parametrize our ellipse. So the parametric form for that ellipse is just x equals a cosine t and y equals b sine t to create our ellipse. So that gives us effectively that r of t is equal to a cos t b sine t. Not that we absolutely have to write that out that way, but sometimes that's helpful for us to do that. And we also have our field that's going to be given by p being equal to 0 and q being equal to x as, of, as we chose for our particular field. So now I've got all the pieces that I need. It's really just a matter of running it all through uh, Green's theorem here. And again, this setup is already completed. I built it so that it would work that way. So now we're transferring over to that single integral over the curve C, where C again is the boundary of our ellipse. So we're going to take the integral over the closed curve C of P dx, and P again is 0. I'll write it out. Obviously it's going to be 0 times dx. And dx is going to be minus a cosine t 
Obviously, again, that's going to be 0 plus q times dy. So q is x times dy. Here's our y. y is going to be b sine t dt. So we end up with an integral over the curve c of x b sine t. So the last thing we need to do then is to just sub in for x. I really should have done that earlier, but that's all right. x here being a cos t. So it looks like we have the integral over c of a b sine t cos t dt. So now your integral is all set up. We just need our bounds. t is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. So now we have a b sine t cos t dt. And when you work that out, that turns out to pi a b, which is in fact the area of an ellipse. This gives us a nice example of how we can use Green's theorem in reverse to calculate uh, an area. It's just an example of using Green's theorem in reverse. We can do other things with it as well. But this is a pretty standard example that's illustrated as an application of Green's theorem.